Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we talked before, obviously, we've been thinking about the time that you know, for this camp. Was that a motivation? Did you try to block it out? Was it a distraction? I mean? Um, I was, because the thing is, is, is throughout my whole life, you know, like from when I wrestled in high school, the motivator to end on a good note high school was because I had in college, you know, and then after co wrestling in college, the motivator to end on a good note in college because I wanted to wrestle in the Olympics. You know, so I always had like this next step and then you know my, my college career got cut a little short and um, you know I found fighting and, and it filled that that void for me and to answer your question it was maybe because if, if if I came in here with this is definitely my last fight what am I looking forward to so I was looking to come in and, and put on my best performance and almost feel invincible or end him in the first, first round where I'm like, give me somebody else, you know? Um, but, I mean, it was uh, a tiring fight for me a little bit, even though it may not look like it. Um, and, you know, I, I would have liked to, there have been more blood and, and, you know, maybe me break his arm or something like that. But it wasn't the case. He kept blocking his face, you know? Um, so in my eyes, it wasn't exciting. So, but I got the win, and uh, nobody's gonna remember that it wasn't exciting. They remember I won. Did you win like, a convincing moment for you, or to <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I was telling myself if I lost, I was indefinitely retiring because I would rather retire than the UFC not sign me back or you know or cut me. You know? Yeah, I'm not fired, I quit. <laughs> um, but I was able to. Go out on the win. Why did you pull the trigger? What 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 convinced you to say no? Yeah, this is the right time. Um, the answer to that is is in the first round he he hooked up and he hit me pretty hard and kind of stumbled me down. And I got up and he was right in my face and I was like, oh, I don't feel like doing this right now. Like you you really want to fight me right now? Like you're you're not giving up? You think you're gonna beat me right now? And for, you know, maybe 20 seconds, I was like, ah, I, maybe I maybe I just let this guy win, you know? And then I got to his leg, I'm like, ah, he ain't gonna win, dog. Um, but the fact that I had this little conversation with myself for 20 seconds in a fist fight, when I was younger, I would never, ever, ever think that, ever. You know, and I, you know the saying that, the less you know, the better. I feel like that's a kiss for fighting. You know, I know too much about fighting, and, and I've done it so many times that I know what I have to do to win. I know what he's thinking, and, and I'm tired, man. Now you've made the decision. Is that a sense of like a weight off your shoulders? How you actually pulled the trigger and done? How do you feel? I mean, if for some reason I run out of money really quick, <laughs> I need a quick turnaround, you know? Uh, but the thing is, 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 and I was telling another interview earlier, is I never balled out of control, you know? When a bill comes, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to grab it really fast. But you know, I, just, I don't buy designer clothes, you know? I, I was able to buy a house. It's not a big house, but it's enough for me and my, my boys. Um, I have a reliable car. Um, I don't have fancy watches, you know, um, I got a couple of dollars in investments and, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to kind of get into the workforce, I guess, you know, or, I mean, if the UFC has, they want me, you know, to do a little talking or a little, I'm in, game, you know, but uh, in terms of fighting and, and getting punched in the face, I'm not into it. Is there an immediate plan, like, for what you will do? And it sounds like you're keeping your options open. I mean, is there, like... A job waiting for you, or a, a something that you're you're wanting to do. Um, so after the Rick Glenn fight, prior to that fight, I, I told myself if I lose, I'm retiring. And after the third round, I totally thought I won. And Brian the Flair came in the in the octagon. And he said, you, "You push, you got the job done. You definitely won that fight." And then I got the result, and I looked at him. And I went, "I have to retire." I told myself I'd retire. This is it. I'm done with this. You know what I mean? Three split decisions 
in a row where I really watched them and I went in and when I rewatched them with the the looking for how that guy beat me, I didn't see it. I, I was really open. I mean, maybe, maybe Elkins, maybe. But the other two I smashed. And I didn't want to, you know, give judges the ability to do that to me again. You know, I mean, in wrestling, you win, you know, seven to three. Football, you win seven to forty-nine or whatever. You know, like it's there. And then after fighting for, you know, a decade, I'm s still slightly unaware of how fights are scored. Like I don't, you know, I, I mean, I outstruck Feely, but he took me down for two times for a split second. So I was like, all right, I won that, but I didn't. So then against Rick Glenn. He outstruck me by six punches, but I took him down six times and held him on his back for, I don't know, like a third of the fight, and then I lost. And I was like, wait, I don't get it, you know? Um, and I just don't want to be able to put in that position for people to just, when you lose, the world stops, man. And it, and, and, and it's, fighting's a very lonely sport, like, when I go back to to the my room right now, I bet you I'm gonna have a ton of text. Great job! When you lose, <laughs> you don't get those texts, man, and it sucks. And um, I don't want to do that. How would, how, how would you look back on your career then? I mean, will you did you enjoy your time as a fighter, or are you gonna think back like, God, I wish I'd never done that? Um, no. When I was when I was younger, I would watch Barry Sanders like crush the field. I'd watch his his highlights before football games, and I would try to be like Barry Sanders. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna be a professional NFL player. And I learned like by eighth grade, like, hey, not the cards. <laughs> but I was I was very determined to be a professional athlete of some shape or form, you know. And I fell in love with wrestling, and, and the goal was to be an uh, Olympic wrestler. And in my mind, an Olympic wrestler is a professional athlete, even though kind of aren't. <laughs> um, and you know, like I said earlier, my, my college career got cut short, and fighting filled that void, and, and I was like, hey, I can still be a professional athlete. You know, um, when I first got to fighting, the goal was just to make enough money just to pay off my college loans. And then I found out you can make a career out of, or I, I found out you can make you know money. I was like, what? So I was fighting for four hundred, four hundred, and I thought I was rich. And I was going out and like taking, taking a girl out. <laughs> like it was on me, man. Like I, how many drinks you want, you know? Um, but then I found out you can really make a career out of it, and, and you know I would drink a few beers and I'd watch like Don Cerrone and, and Ben Henderson, you know, in a fight and I'd be like, I think I can take them down. You know, like, I could definitely take them down. And I always had that mindset, you know. Um, and I started learning more and more about fighting and how long it hurts. How long has retirement been in mind? Is it just starting this camp or like something that's been brewing for quite a bit? Um, because the thing that is at, at, at fighting at 145, you know, I know I'm short and stuff like that, but I'm jacked. I don't know if you can tell. Um, and I, I naturally get up to like 175, you know, like, I have a few sedasas, you know, and a couple chicken parmesans. Um, that's like where my body wants to hang out, you know, and so like when I would get a fight, it wasn't like, oh, I gotta get in there and get tired and fight this guy, it's, I have to lose 30 pounds, you know, and, um, and I've been doing it for a long time, you know, set, what, eight years? I feel like it's good for your body. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's why, you know, like, after the Rick Glenn fight, it was like, I kind of had, I don't know if I could curse or not, but I kind of like, fuck it, I don't care anymore, I'm not going to cut that extra 10 pounds. I fight wherever I want. And 155 is, is where I started fighting at. And I was 7 0 at 155 at one point in my life. And I was I felt it's a bully, you know? What do you think your favorite memory would be? 
My favorite memory, because um, again, I would watch Donald Cerrone and I'd watch Clay Guida fight. I'm like, man, these guys are animals. They must be. They're like they're sponsored by Tap Tap. They must be making bank. <laughs> you know, yeah, buses and stuff like that. So when I fought Clay Guida. That was pretty cool. Uh, being a guy that I, I kind of looked up to, and I thought he was like a, a complete stud. Uh, but in terms of performance and leaving it all out there in, in the octagon was my fight against Matt Grice, where like I would like on the final bell, I was gasping for air, so tired, you know, that I left it all right there. Talk about your boys. They're not. I mean. I thought about it because I watched, you know, some of those big stars, you know, like bring their kids in. I was like, man, that'd be pretty cool. But like, there was a little piece of me that like, if I lost, you know, like that would suck. I mean, maybe that's a, a shitty way to think, but I don't know. I mean, they're, they're still pretty young. You know, they're going to be four and six in, in April. And, um, you know, there's people here drinking and, you know, blood and stuff like that. I don't know. Well, we can watch it from my couch. You have to go back to 2011 when you were the underdog in a fight. You were put as the favorite originally and then were bet to the underdog. Is that a thing that's insulting to you or does that even go into your mind frame before a fight? It. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Because I, I, was, I was never, at least in my mind, I was never the most naturally gifted athlete in any sport I did. Um, what made me, what put me in the starting position or what made, is my extra work and my ability to grind and just keep going, you know, uh, crush a side headlock where I had to like drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it, drill it, you know. Um, so for me, man, I was, I was always kind of the underdog and I always wanted to prove people wrong. That's, that's one thing for me that's very motivating is when you tell me I can't do something. Is that how you'd like your career to be remembered? As someone who was less athletically gifted than the, the competition, but maybe your heart drove you yeah, through? Yeah, I'm a very heart-driven guy. Um, and my, my desire and will to win is, is very great. Um, like, I'm, I'm not done, like, setting goals for myself, you know? This doesn't stop here. Like, I was telling Mark that I'm, I, you know, because I think it's completely insane. I want to run from Long Island MMA in Farmingdale out to Montauk. <laughs> Just because, insane. hang on, for that re you're laughing at me right now. I think it's like, you know, a lot of people don't think I can do it. Yeah. It's 88 miles. The furthest I've ever run was 11 miles. But, like, I know that mentally I will not break and I will do it. I could do it right now if I wanted to. So you plan for the summer? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's amazing. But not in the summer, because it's too hot. <laughs> you know? I'm gonna, you know, I, once my foot swelling goes down, maybe I, that's, that's the goal. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Good luck to your uncle. Thank you. Thank you, man.